Greetings and salutations, all you absolutely gorgeous individuals. Welcome to another FPL League Unlocked Earth. Mark here to break down another all time type of list. Today, we're going to the real heroes of the bottom lane. We're talking about supports, historically the best of the best to do it, and we're tracking the evolution of just being a ward bot to get two shot by mid laners to now doing more damage than 80 carries in games. That's the evolution of support. The only role that I feel like is comparable to the jungler position on how much change we've had over the course of the years of the game, the evolution of League of Legends and what is required of your support to be a standout player you, you know, again, you've gone from pretty much, uh, and it still is, in solo queue, the unsung heroes of your team. These are the heroes of their team. There is no question about it. These supports, these legends on what they have been able to do through their careers. And before we get in to the list, as is tradition, a couple of honorable mentions just outside. It's a trio of guys who played in Europe, and that is Mickey. Yellow Star and Gorilla. That's right. He's most known for his time on Misfits. None of that other LCK stuff, right? I don't know about that. But <laughs> yes, I do know that these three deserve an honorable mention. A little bit of a shout out in this situation. Fantastic players. You have signature plays from a couple of these guys that you can go through. You've got longevity in these careers as well. Just not enough when you are stacking them against some of the contributions, some of the game-changing things that have happened with some of these other supports that we will go through. And, you know, obviously, Mickey, guy, probably the GOAT when it comes to European uh, supports. Hello Sang is a guy you can mention. Yellow Star, a pioneer, gorilla, the longevity of the LCK. But too many good guys on this actual list. And the first one to touch on is... Doesn't have the individual accolades or the titles as everyone else on this list, but Mad Life is the ultimate OG. This is the guy who made Thresh look like a broken champion and was the truest of pioneers and in innovation when it came to supports. This is where you start to figure out what the line is to be on a list like this. You look at some of the guys that we talked about, the honorable mentions, you know, one little break goes their way. You're adding a world championship to these guys' resumes, which then can throw you in to this type of conversation. Mad Life, you have that innovative style, the thresh hooks, the way that he was able to play and utilize this champion, taking it to the, the forefront of being that creative playmaking support that we have seen emerge and develop and evolve over time, of course. Mad Life is where it all really begins for a lot of us to find a support that is not just uh, he's playing the the weak loser champions type of thing. This is somebody who's making the plays happen, who's making everything go right for his team, for the big carries. Mad Life has got to get a lot of respect. One of the first guys that your average player could look at and go, oh, you can carry a game as support? Oh, I didn't even know you could do that at the time. And yes, time and time again, we did do it with Mad Life. Uh, maybe if he had had some better CJ teams, we would have seen more LCK titles or competitiveness out of him. But again, hard to compare eras, but Mad Life absolutely deserving of being in this conversation. Another one of the OGs, not quite as old as Mad Life, but Mr. LCS, Captain America himself, Core JJ, and of course, has absolutely dominated the LCS for years. Two MVPs, a bunch of titles, but just the LCS career alone, not enough to get on this list. But uh, luckily for him, got a little world championship under that belt as well. Uh, yes, he is uh, standing tall amongst the tallest of LCS can stand, and he gets that extra little boost stepping on the, on the Gen G, the Core JJ Samsung Galaxy World Championship Stepping Stone. Yes, he does deserve a spot like this. It's going to be similar to, to Impact, finding his way on the top lane list. There are going to be people that are upset or, or not agreeing about an LCS representative being able to find their way on here. But I think you look at the top level of success, the way that he's been able to carry at that top tier in the LCS on Team Liquid, the effort outside of, you know, uh, you know maybe the, you know, strict contract stuff the stuff that he's done outside the scene to try and raise up the lcs got to get a little bit of extra bonus points there for my guy and then you look at just the stats the numbers the wins the losses the way he plays for me 
the big one, Rakan. You look at the w amount of games that he has played on that champion to still have about a 65% win rate is very impressive. And how about what his bot lane partners have done as, with him as the partner? You can talk about Doublelift having some of his best years in a star-studded career on that Team Liquid roster. Tactical. Remember how hyped up we were with him as that domestic talent? Obviously, things kind of fell off when he was not on Team Liquid. Yawn has had a career jump over the last few splits. Really the only one that didn't have their best games of their career playing alongside Core JJ was probably Han Sama. I was going to say, it feels like Han Sama is the only answer in that type of one. But it is something to talk about with Core JJ. And one of these ones where, yes, you'll find it in a couple of these guys that we'll talk about further up on this list. But not everybody gets the distinction of saying that you made your other partner in the bottom lane better almost every single time. And that certainly is something that Core JJ was able to manifest in any of the bot lanes he's been part of, really. And it doesn't matter, even if it is the LCS, still for now, a major region. And he has been at the very top of the supports uh, throughout, what, like, Five plus years now that he's been in the LCS and has kind of stepped into that final boss role multiple times, as we've seen, playing with completely different iterations of Team Liquid. He has been the constant, and despite being one of, I think he's now even the oldest player in the LCS, still one of the best to ever do it in terms of supports. Next is where things get a little shaky on this list because number six, you have the guy who probably has the lowest floor, the lowest lows of all the guys on this list. But there's no question when he's playing at his best, Barrel is an absolute mad scientist in the best way. And a lot of the times he's simultaneously controlling all four other players on the team too. I love Barrel on a list like this because it is the true reality check for a lot of people on how you're evaluating these players, where you want to rank them, what is important to you when you're talking about the greatest player of all time because Barrel steps into the picture with not a lot on the resume except for the big bolded letters of three world championships. Barrel is really a, an anomaly amongst everything else that you will encounter talking about a greatest player of all time. But there is no denying, as you said, when he is at his peak, when he's at his best, that's where you've got the world championship runs coming through. And again, not just that it's, oh, you know, he's playing really well and that was it. You know that the way that he plays is having that information, having those shot calls for people that aren't himself. So having that go right and having it be at its peak, and that is where you see that world championship effect. I don't think anybody can talk about having that level of a difference that Barrel can bring to the table when he is locked in and at his very best. And most of his impressive stats are something that only SKT members historically have. Obviously, that's three straight world finals, winning two of them with two different teams. The only guy uh, to do that without any SKT. I know Duke did it with IG and SKT, but Barrel, the only guy to be pulling those numbers off. And, you know, even the glory days of Dom Juan, the dynasty area, you were saying, yeah, but that was a stacked lineup. But... They have not been able to fill the void that was left by Barrel and have never gotten close to reaching that level that they did with him on the lineup. Even if there are some peaks and valleys, he'll int for a few weeks in the LCK when the games matter the most. He absolutely shows that he can lead a team. I, I think it's, it's one of the best things that comes to mind for me is when you're evaluating a prospect in baseball, you're talking about a five-tool player, someone who can bring high skills in all the key aspects of the game. Barrel's not your five-tool player. He is. There's no question about that. He is bringing maybe two, three tools to the job site. But with those three tools, he's building you a mansion. He's building you a world championship is the way things have gone. I think it's incredible the the you know uh, the ways that you can look at his career and what you can take away from it. But I think regardless, he deserves a spot on this list. When you look at the accolades and how he accomplished them, Barrel deserves his spot immortalized amongst the greatest supports of all time.
he might be one of the more polarizing support players. One of the more criminally underrated ones is in that five spot. And we are talking about RNG Ming. I think especially because of how bad RNG has been the last couple of years. And Ming was kind of in this contract jail. We haven't even seen him starting or playing games. But no question, during that peak of... 2017 to basically 2022 you're talking about a five plus year span he was right there alongside a guy like Mako in terms of best support in the LPL some of the best in the world and I know he's played with some star studded 80 carries Uzi obviously and then Gala afterwards but there's a reason those guys were at such high levels and it's because Ming is one of the most reliable supports of all time He's someone that I think you can throw right into the category alongside Core JJ of, of these unique guys that have been able to find a way to level up their bot lane partner. And an even more impressive thing, really, for Ming is the quality of those bot lane partners and how they were risen, uh, brought up to a whole nother level alongside him. Yes, RNG and that whole messy situation and his contract and how things have played out over the last, you know, uh, really three you know maybe even four years at this point you could go back have soured a lot of the incredible excitement and hype that has been there for his career and what he had been able to do in the lpl i i think back 2016 that was an incredible run that he had alongside uzi and what type of power we were able to see from that duo i think when i think ming i'm thinking of that leona the 68 percent win rate leona throughout his career really one of the most impressive uh, engaged champions he's got and one of the best at playing both styles of support, being able to do this kind of enchanter, supportive, ranged, fully supporting the AD carry to play in the Rel, play in the Leona. Obviously one of the best Nautilus mechanics that we've seen, not just the LPL, but worldwide as well. But consistency is the biggest thing for him. And remember, this is a three-time MSI champion alongside his boy Xiaohu, the only guys to be pulling out international numbers like that, even more so than SKT era. So a big shout out to Ming, another guy who feels underrated, even though he shouldn't be on these all-time lists, is Wolf for SKT. Unfortunately, that era of Dynasty, it feels like there's a disservice to the non-faker members that you're going, well, you know, they were a stacked roster, kind of got carried maybe, but you're going, no, the reason these rosters were stacked were because of the guys like Wolf. No question to me, one of the things that just gets overlooked and kind of, you know, overrides a lot of the success, a lot of the triumphs that we saw with Wolf is, of course, the way things tailed off from that SKT dynasty that he was obviously a big part of and what T1 was able to do. And then, of course, with T1 being able to retool and keeping one of those members of the SKT dynasty, of course, Faker, it has, you know, lessened, I think, some of the contributions in people's eyes of the other four members of the original SKT dynasty. And to me, that's a shame because what Wolf was able to do, how he was able to play and what type of plays he brought in the biggest of moments for T1 is something I will never forget through a long time of these successes. Of course, everybody knows the big Rakan play. That is the huge one that he made for T1 when it was always the ch all the chips were against them. Wolf found a way for the team. And I feel like he's a guy who actually now, in hindsight, with his career, his playing career done, he's retired. I think people are getting more respect for what he did after seeing, you know, all these highlights from SKT over the years and going, yeah, you know what? This guy was actually incredibly reliable. And for that 2015 to 2017 stretch was absolutely never below one of the three best supports in the world. Even if there was often a guy, maybe you'd peg ahead of him individually in that support head to head. The consistency was there absolutely throughout. My man even got to play some jungle games in 2018. <laughs> <Don't>, you <know? laughs> We're keeping him on this list. We don't want to talk about the jungle. He's not game. on the best junglers of all time. Uh, we'll no, sir, absolutely not. But I think one of the ones that is undervalued as well when you're talking about Wolf in this type of position on a list like this is just the stability that he brought alongside Bang to that bottom lane for the early SKT dynasties. Yes, early eras and all these type of things. But we have absolutely learned Having that stability with your roster, that key contribu contributors, being able to be stable performers, consistent, that is not a guarantee. And Wolf was able to bring that for the T1 success. That was the recipe for that first era of Dynasty, was the consistency out of that bot lane. 
Now we move into the big boys. We're talking top three action. And a mere few years ago, you probably easily had Mata as your goat of supports. But there's been some guys coming for that top mantle, picking up some trophies along the way. But still, Mata, still the only world's MVP to come from the support role. He did this. He dominated on multiple teams. Obviously, Samsung White. Then he goes to RNG, has an incredible MSI run. Then we see him uh, on KT Rolster winning an LCK title. And then, of course, SKT, that spring split in MSI. He was still the Mata of old. Oh, Mata, what a what a wonderful legend to talk about in this type of one. And you're right, you know, you turned back the page a couple of years ago, and he is without question still sitting on top of the throne of the support mountain. Things have changed. We've had a couple of, of hot young starts roll their way through, pick up enough to be in that conversation. But Mata, what he did for the game, what he did for that support position, elevating it to another level is something that he can claim throughout his career. I think you look at uh, through it and you can say, yes, doesn't have necessarily quite as much of a runway room as some of these other guys we have talked about with the like, longevity in their career. But the highs that he was able to hit, that MVP trophy is a huge one at the World's event. And then you look through the champion pool for me is another thing I love to do and, and spot out some of these champions. You're talking about Nautilus, of course, with him. Thresh is a big one. You throw in a couple of sneaky Zyra and Galio performances with high win rates. Mata is one of the best, if not again, the best support of all time. And again, he was very much the guy taking that torch from Mad Life as that next generation of pioneers, innovators, and not just, you know, mechanics, but we know what he did in terms of vision control warding and the macro development of the game as a whole uh, within the LCK and, of course, emulated globally. So absolutely right there alongside Mad Life in terms of pioneers when it comes to support. But unfortunately for him, a guy who only started playing a couple of years after him is still picking up dubs on the Rift. We know Mako spent almost an entire decade on EDG, but after picking up his first world championship in 2021, already got an MSI title, multiple LPL trophies. This guy has over 8,500 assists in the LPL. The only guy to do that, not just in the LPL, but any single region he's got over 732 wins this is insane <laughs> when you're talking about the runway that we can look at when you're looking at mako as you said starting pretty much just after uh you know uh, mata got into the scene but what we see here what he's been able to do throughout his long storied career is really special and the way that he has leveled up throughout it is the other important thing to keep track of because this was not an, an immediate this is the support you got to watch it was a slow build up it was a slow burn for mako through a couple of these early years still impressing here and there you get a world championship which felt so much like the validation for a lot of the success that we had seen domestically from him and then you add it on the msi title you keep going this is one of the best supports of all time there's no question in my mind even if he stepped into the table with a yumi world championships <laughs> we forgive him for that one but he's he's a guy who okay you can say he's played with some star studded 80 carries but there's a reason guys like deft Guys like Viper, they want to go to the LPL to play with this guy because they want to be partnered alongside him. And we've also seen him groom and grow younger AD carries like Leave and Hope, who had some fantastic starts. Mako leaves and their careers really can kind of fall off a cliff after that point. But he's played with both the veterans and the rookies and been able to develop them. The longevity is this dude's middle name for how long he's been at the top of the game. We've called him washed, I feel like, multiple times throughout his career but he always bounces back did it again playing alongside jackie love on top esports and this guy is showing absolutely no signs of slowing down maybe would have been polarizing a year or two ago to already dub kiria the greatest support of all time but two world championships two lck mvps already and let's be honest from his first year on DRX as a rookie, we were talking about him already as maybe the best support in the world at the time. And now you might say, well, his career is still too young. 
but he's already played more games than Mata did in his career. It's finally arrived. It is finally time to celebrate Kyria as the world's greatest support of all time. This has been a day that we told you, put on a calendar, wait for it. It's happening. Just, you know, is it gonna be the 2025 one or the 2026 one? 20, who knows, but it's gonna be there. It's gonna happen. You will have a Kyria day. Today is that day. Here he is at the very top of it all. As you said, already more games than Life 7, which is, uh, again, a comment on how many games we're playing currently and how crazy it is. Like, he's about 80 or so games behind Core JJ. Core JJ! He's <laughs> got like four crazy. years on him competitively. Yeah. Absolutely insane. But what he has been able to do in that short runway time is nothing short of outstanding. The impressive uh diversity that we have seen him able to play of course down in the bottom lane the creativity that he's been able to have with these playmaking plays for t1 and then of course the championships that are all brought up behind it and reigning supreme he's he's gonna have a dance with new jeans he's gonna do whatever he's gonna do but he's gonna do it as a champion at the top of the greatest supports of all time and listen, we're always talking, highlighting the crazy 80 carry picks, the Yasuo pick, the Lee Sin that nobody else can do. But even on meta champions, even on a Thresh, on a Rakan, on a Bard, you say there's so many plays in the biggest series of the year that you're saying nobody makes that play but Kyria. There's no other support in the world that are doing these things that this kid is doing. This is one we have been waiting to celebrate. And I think Kyria can look at this and maybe... You know, part of it is his own success and what he has done. Part of it is because it's the support position. And there isn't quite a log jam at this very top the way a teammate like Zeus has to experience in the top lane where it is about the equation on what you truly value and how you value one over the other. How much of it is that secret champion equation? Doesn't matter for support. Every single way you look at it, Kyria has to be unquestioned as the greatest support of all time now. A slam dunk uh, prospect that has delivered and exceeded expectations still young in his career. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.